It is the voice of Indiana County. It's WCCS 101.1 FM and AM 1160, WCCSradio.com. Rob Heinrich is with us this morning. Rob Heinrich is, of course, the superintendent of the Indiana Area School District. And just for our Facebook listeners and posting it, I'll say his name again, Rob Heinrich, because it didn't didn't take right away. But there you go. Now it's recording. Our conversation with the Indiana superintendent brought to you by Marcus and Mac, both the best personal injury law firm in the best of Indiana County contest. Marcus and Mac, a law firm representing injured people. I don't know if it's a relief to you when the state budget finally comes in or not, but I'm guessing a whole lot of business managers and folks involved in school districts and to the level that you are, are finally able to go, phew, finally. Now at least we have some solid numbers to go on. Always a good thing when the uh, when the state passes their budget for school districts because I mean that's how we operate right so uh, yeah we were holding our breath there and hoping for the best and and we are very you know happy and 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 I guess gra- grateful is the best word that they got it uh, done and they got it done relatively soon. How analytical do you get uh, for your individual school district when you look at those numbers? I would guess you'd have to be really, really sharp on on exactly what you're getting. Well, 100 uh, percent. We count on that money to survive, and we definitely dig in deep to look at each and every penny that is uh, spent. And you know, and there's a lot of good things that happen with this budget. There's 494 million dollars or so in new funding uh, to close the adequacy gap. So, you know, we're happy that the uh, lawmakers made some some headway there um they invested a lot in in education not as much of it as we like uh, made it out to this county uh we were hoping for a lot more uh, to come out here to indiana but but you know we're grateful that we did get a, a small increase on our on our funding this year how long before you get an exact grip on on how you're going to be able to distribute those funds and what you're actually getting in well we're actually working on that right now uh, we have a meeting this afternoon with uh, PASBO the Pennsylvania School uh, Business Organization uh, which is the school business managers uh, they'll break it down for us a little bit and then the superintendents association has a meeting on Thursday where we look at the numbers a little bit more in depth and then and from there, we'll start planning where we can uh, make our improvements. So yeah. we're a little bit disappointed about the charter schools. Uh, you know, we were hoping that they were going to make some, some really significant changes to the way that cyber charter schools are funded because it's just not fair. And I think everybody on both sides of the aisle agreed that it's not right and it needs fixed, and they just didn't fix it. So I'm sure that got caught up in some sort of compromise, but uh, some there's still a lot of work to be done in that in that realm that is one of if not the uh, most vexing problem i would think for school districts because uh, you can get a bill the night before uh, that is going to change your entire financial approach for a season oh 100 percent. i mean there's 1.7 million dollars the taxpayer money indiana taxpayer money that comes into our our school district and then goes out to cyber charter schools in harrisburg and philadelphia that should be spent to educate our kids here in indiana so it's just not right, and uh, you know that's a huge number uh, when you're looking at our our deficit. You look at our tax increase; that's about the same amount of our, as our. Something that's a, more actually. It's about five hundred thousand dollars more than our tax increase brought in. Um, you know that's a significant amount of money. It can change the entire outlook uh, with just one one small reform. When you look at that and and the problem with charter schools and and how they are funded. Um, are you all concerned, all that concerned with where they're going to get their money if it's not uh, from the local school districts? Or is it, uh, is it uh, one of those, let's find a solution that's good for all? Oh, and, and we're open to all solutions. And, uh, but frankly, no. Uh, a lot of those cyber charter schools have you know, tens of twenties, millions, hundreds of millions in their fund balance, which is their reserve money. So, so they, are, uh, they have plenty of money to, uh, to operate and do what they have to do. So I'm not so much worried about what, where they would get their funding from for a little while. I think we have a bigger problem with public education that we have to fix first with the, uh, the brick-and-mortar schools here right in our backyard. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about uh, something a little happier. Uh, sure, absolutely. That's, that's yeah. the uh, Indiana Area Education Foundation, which uh, has new life. Yeah, I'm really excited about this. So we, uh, a group of us, blew the dust off an old file called the Indiana Area Education Foundation. Uh, it's an organization that existed uh, up until 2013. 
um, and was dedicated to trying to do fundraising activities to kind of fill those gaps that are left in, in these budget deficits and try to help make sure that every student that comes to Indiana Area School District or lives in the Indiana Area community has the absolute best educational experience, like where we never have to say no to kids. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I'm happy to say that we finally, uh, a couple of weeks ago, just incorporated the, uh, rebooted it and reincorporated that that organization. And they're starting to plan events here coming up. And uh, so we're really excited about what that organization can do to help our community. Is the mission any different than it has always been? The mission is to make sure that every single student has that outstanding educational experience. They're, they focused on a few big buckets. Um, inclusion, inclusion is one, making sure that our playgrounds are accessible to students with, with special needs, to make sure that our bathrooms are accessible to, to all citizens, no matter what their situation. Uh, we focused on the arts and music. You know, We want to put all, all of our money, that uh, taxpayer money, into our music programs but we simply just can't buy new violins all the time. You know, they're expensive. Mm So uh, raising that money to fill those little gaps, we want to focus on STEM activities and science opportunities, uh, real world learning experiences for kids or field trips and stuff. A student wins an uh, an event, a writing contest, but now they have to fly to Detroit. Um, The the taxpayers, that's not in the budget, you know, so how do we come up with that money to give that kid that experience, that student, that opportunity to really go and shine and continue to grow, that's where the Education Foundation steps in to make that a possibility. We're going to focus on athletics. And what's even more, what I'd really love to do and what I think the foundation would love to do is build an endowment that you know where we raise enough money that that money starts to make money. So for mm-hmm. future generations, you know, every student has that same opportunity for the absolute best educational experience possible. So it's exciting work, and I'm really grateful to the people that stepped up to lead this. One of the traditional difficulties with foundations uh, is that uh, a group of people uh, will naturally graduate out as their kids graduate out of it. Uh, and so finding the people to remain involved becomes a really difficult challenge. Um, and and uh, I don't know what was the cause for, in 2013, the organization going away. But uh, you can see where that is something that you have to pay attention to when you establish something. It absolutely is, and I'm and I'm not sure what happened in 2013 either. But um, but this group of organ this group of individuals is very intelligent. It's an eclectic group. We have uh, a lot of parents on it for sure. But uh, the president is uh, Mr. Ron Earhart, is a retired gentleman who used to serve on the school board and just mm-hmm. wants to just wants to help out. Has no kids in the district anymore, so. So he's involved. And they were very intelligent the way they set it up. Every one of these board members has committed to a four-year term, and then the terms will rotate. Uh, they'll cycle off every one year, two years, three years. So there'll be fresh people joining the organization, but there'll still be some consistency and continuity, yeah. too, to make sure that whatever happened in 2013 doesn't happen again to this organization. Can people get involved now? Absolutely. You can get involved. Go to IASD.cc. And look for the foundation on a web page under the About Us tab. Um, and there you can see the mission. You can see all the events we have coming up. We have a, a golf outing on September 28th that we're registering people for now, a spaghetti dinner in, in October. And, again, you can make d- direct donations. Um, you can earmark the donation that you make for certain activities, the inclusion or the athletics or the arts, or whatever mm-hmm. it is that you uh, are passionate about. So. We're really excited about where this organization is going to take our kids. Rob Heinrich with us, the Indiana Area School District Superintendent, and we're talking about issues uh, for the school district. When you get into the month of July, a lot of school boards, uh, they take off for the month of July, and there are no school board meetings. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's not the case for Indiana Area, but the schedule is reduced, and uh, some people are, you know, you get that chance to step back a little bit and maybe get a little perspective as well with that time off. Uh, uh, So, what happens uh, in July around uh, around the school buildings themselves? What's going on in the hallways and the offices? Right now, you wouldn't recognize the buildings if you walk through. the uh, The custodial staff is hard at work. the The people behind the scenes are doing what they do to make sure that the building is in tip top shape for when the students come back and the staff come back. Everything is pulled out of the classrooms, and they're they're doing a real deep cleaning of the carpets or recarpeting classrooms. They're painting walls. They're you know, fixing things that uh, that needed addressed um, that we couldn't get to while the while the, the people are there. Um, you know, so they are 
you know, working very, very hard to get the schools ready. And uh, they have a shorted, uh, truncated timetable this summer uh, because we got out later than normal this past school year and we start earlier than normal this coming yeah. fall. So, so they're feeling the pressure, but they all do a great job. I'm really proud of the, the way they make our schools look. Yeah, and when we're talking about schoolwork, uh, the Ike uh, continues to be on schedule, yes? Yes, sir. They keep plugging along. Um, you know, we get more change orders. They're, they're running into problems, but when you run into problems, it means they're making progress, you know, so we're overcoming those. Uh, they've, uh, if you've been able to drive past, but uh, if you get a chance, swing by the Eisenhower space. They are really, really the, the changes are now visible down there. So um, everything is on pace to be done on time so far. So we're excited about that. Imagine what that day is going to be like. Oh, it's going to be a great day. <laughs> it's going to be a great day when that, that building's open. Yeah, when the first student walks through the door oh. uh, on, on that day when that school is finally reopened. What a we talk about size of relief. Well, there you go, right there. Oh, for sure. Celebration time. The poor staff. I mean, you got to think about that staff. For four years now, they've been dislocated. They've been yeah. basically squatters in the junior high, and I know that they've been through so much. And, you know, the students have, uh, that are there now have never experienced like, you know, so yeah. they don't have those memories that the staff do. But but when those first kids walk through the door, you better believe we're going to have video of it because it's mm -hmm. it's going to be a wide-eyed, you know, oh, excited yeah. moment for them for sure. That's it. That's going to be the culmination of a lot of work to get this done. 100%. Uh, so other things go on across the district, uh, building decisions and, and things of that nature. Meanwhile, you get ready for a brand-new school year. You are also getting ready. You hope to go kiss a pig. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, I am one of the celebrity fundraisers for the Evergreen After School Club. Evergreen is a great uh, partner of Indiana Area School District. They help run our summer program for kids. They help run our after school programs for students. So, I um, mean, they do it completely on uh, donations. They're a nonprofit organization, so they don't get any of you know the funding sources that we get. So, um, so I volunteered to uh, step up and try to kiss a pig. I have an event this coming Thursday at Sit and Stay. Uh, thanks to Miss Margie down there, and uh, we're yeah. going to be. I'm going to. I used to play guitar, so I'm going to blow the dust off the old guitar and see if I can still play. Really? Yeah, and you can come and donate to make me play more, or you can donate to make me stop if stop I'm terrible. Playing. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, But, uh, yeah, but there's special drinks, and there's going to be some special guest baristas, and it should be a fun time. So 4 to 6 p.m. on Thursday, if you're not doing anything, come on out for a cup of coffee and hopefully some good music. Are you doing some flamenco? Uh, no flamenco, no. That's all, <laughs> like... Old stuff, That's I guess. A little, <laughs> little intricate there, right? <laughs> right yeah, and that way I'm not that talented. <laughs> <laughs> but we didn't know this about you. Yeah, That's hopefully, I, yeah, job. I can. Hopefully, I can do a good job. Of that we're also going to plan a, a couple trivia nights down the road here, and and hopefully, uh, and if anybody wants to donate to to Kiss a Pig, you can Google that. Look at the Facebook that you can. If if you want to support my campaign, and please do, Mr. Rob Heinrich. Go ahead and donate and make sure that you say who it's for. And if, if I raise enough money, I get to embarrass myself and kiss that pig in August. Right. Well, you make sure Jake doesn't trip you on the way out of the studio. Yeah, no, he's going to have some tough competition for sure. He, he's hoping you fall down and break that wrist before you can play the guitar come Thursday. Right. He's Rob Heinrich, Indiana Area School District Superintendent. Thanks for the visit. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. The voice of Indiana County, it's WCCS 101.1 FM, AM 1160 and WCCSradio.com.